Hello, this is Steve in the repair department, and today we're going to be looking at uh, Daystate's, one of their premier pieces. Uh, this is the new Wolverine R, and uh, the R, of course, meaning that it's a regulated gun. I'm going to show you how to change some O-rings in the regulator. You can have a simple leak, and it's something that uh, you might want to try to uh, do yourself. Of course, uh, if not, feel free to always uh, send it back to us, and we'll be more than happy to, to repair any kind of problems, issues that you might have with your rifle. So let's go ahead and get started. These are the tools that we'll be using uh, in today's demonstration. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll be using the five millimeter uh, Allen wrench. Uh, of course, that's to take the stock screw out. Uh, we'll be using the uh, four millimeter. Uh, and of course, that's to be taking the, the valve body as far as apart. Uh, we're gonna be taking a, a seven, eight, six point socket. Uh, you'll need that to uh, uh, remove the actual reg itself. And then, uh, of course, any kind of pick will do. Uh, something that you can get uh, your O-rings off uh, whenever you're replacing them. And so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll go ahead and remove the uh, stock screw, lay this aside, removing the action from the stock itself, very easy, lay the stock aside, take the dust cover, dust cap off the fill valve, and I'll be going, I'll be putting the, uh, the, the action itself in the vise, uh, that way it's easier for me to work on the rifle. And by the way, I am using rubber jaws. I don't want you to think that whenever you send the rifle in that I'm putting the bottle in the vise without uh, protection. Uh, so we make sure that uh, we, we're very, we take care of your product. We don't want any scratches. So another tool that you're going to need uh, to remove the, the air in this rifle is going to be a 5H socket. And so we'll go ahead and we'll take this, we'll break this open. You can hear the air, of course coming out and I don't want to take a chance on the high pressure uh, blowing this screw out so we'll just let it slowly uh, bleed down until we know that it's completely empty. One nice thing I'll go ahead and talk about uh, the Wolverine R is that uh, Huma, uh, that's the regulator that uh, Daystate's chosen to, to, to put in their rifles. In my opinion and I think many others, uh, the Huma regulator is probably the best regulator out there right now. Uh, there's a lot of regulators out uh, that perform very well but the Huma being one of the easier ones to work on and probably the, one of the easier ones to adjust. Not only a great rifle, but your, the components of the rifle itself are high, the high, of the highest quality. So it's been a few minutes and uh, the air pressure now is, is, is out of the, uh, uh, the system itself. I'll go ahead and uh, look at the gauges. You can look at the gauges and, and you can see that there's no air pressure. And with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and, there we go. I went ahead and unscrewed the fill valve completely and there was a little air left in it. So just be careful. You don't want to start doing work with any kind of pressure in uh, the, the chamber itself. And once you know that the gun is completely depressurized, you can then go ahead and put the fill valve back into position. And if, if you'd like, you can go ahead and uh, tighten, tighten it back up. Um, that way it's done. We're going to go ahead and uh, loosen up the four screws that hold the, the body. Uh, into position. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you here. Um, there's screws right here and these are the four that we're, we're doing. We're going to go ahead and remove these four screws. Okay, I'm going to put it in the vise and I'm, we're going to go ahead and we're going to loosen the, uh, the four set screws up. Uh, again, I'm using a smaller wrench. It's easier for me to get in uh, position. Uh, with, with this wrench here, uh, I'm going to be hitting uh, the trigger mechanism and with this wrench here, uh, it, it, it's all right, but it's still at, a, at an angle. And so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and use my smaller wrench to just break, break these loose. Okay. There we go. They are all loose. Uh, with that in mind, you can take, you can start removing. Uh, usually you can do it with your, your finger. Uh, the first few screws, uh, you can take again, the, the one that's a little longer, which to me is very helpful. Now these screws right here, because of the bottle, I didn't remove the bottle and you don't have to remove the bottle, they're not going to come out. They'll stay in, in that position. Uh, they will not come out. So don't try to take them out. You can actually do damage to the carbon fiber bottle. So we'll take that and then with this here, we'll go ahead and loosen this. At this point, I'm gonna hold on to the back end. Uh, this is where your valve stem is, Your peak seal, uh, we're removing the valve body itself away from each other. Uh, so 
uh, just uh, remember that there are going to be some parts in here that uh, we need to make sure that everything goes back together. And I'll, I'll show you exactly how to do that. Uh, just remember that we do have other components that possibly could uh, come out of their position and uh, we need to make sure that everything is sitting right whenever we put it back together. There we go. I know it's off completely. Now I'm going to go ahead and you'll feel the spring go. Now uh, there's here, you'll see that there's the uh, valve pin. I'll just go ahead and point with this. There's the valve, valve pin inside. There's of course a spring. And of course uh, you've got the peak seal inside. And so make sure that those are on position, which they are, and just lay this portion aside. Now, we'll go ahead and turn this back around, remove the, uh, this is where we're gonna remove the regulator. There's a cap here that is usually just really hand tight, just uh, doesn't have to be on there, over, oh, and doesn't have to be over, overly tightened. Uh, something that will just come off. There we go. And at this point, we will take our seven eighths and we will put this on and remove the regulator. The regulator itself comes out very easy. Uh, again, I will usually use my fingers after loosening up because I don't want to put any marks on the valve body itself. And so we'll go ahead and remove the regulator. Here's the human regulator. So if there were a leak externally, these would be the O-rings that you would be replacing. It would be either one of these three right here. I'm not, I'm not gonna replace them, it's a brand new unit, but uh, very easy to remove. Um, again, it would be taking a pick and going up, getting underneath the O-ring, and then just pulling the O-ring off. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that in position. And then of course, doing the same thing here, removing the O-ring, removing the O-ring. So the three O-rings that we're dealing with today would be seven, eight, and nine on it. And on the sheet that I'm, gonna, I'm going off of, I'll go ahead and post this. That way you know exactly what sizes and where the O-rings go. But seven, eight, and nine, you've got seven, which is a 14 by two, and that, that's number seven right there. That's a 14 by two. And then you have eight, which is here, and that is a 11 by 1.5. And then you have this O-ring here on the outer uh, that is the number nine, and it, that is an 18 by 1.5. So after replacing the O-rings on the regulator, uh, of course this human regulator is fully adjustable and it's very easy to do, uh, depending on if you would like to try. Um, it, it, all it takes is a flathead screwdriver. Uh, knowing uh, where the adjustments are, I mean, I would recommend like on this one right here, uh, you might, we might put a mark there on it. Uh, that way you have a reference point. That way whenever you adjust your regulator, if you need to dig back in and, 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 and position it back into the original spot, you can do so and, and knowing where you actually, where, where you moved it from. So if you're adding pressure or you're taking away pressure, you can go ahead and always uh, go back to the original position. Um, but these regulators are fully adjustable and if uh, you want to try to, to, to adjust your regulator, uh, you can do so. But keep in mind, that any kind of adjustments that you do, any kind of work that you do on your gun outside of what I'm going through in this video, uh, you could destroy the warranty on your gun. Just, just be careful whenever you're performing uh, the, these adjustments uh, and, the, and the work itself. Um, but uh, again, this is, uh, Huma is known for not only, like I said, being the best regulator in my eyes, uh, but one of the easiest regulators to adjust. Uh, if you're trying to change their pressure points. At this point, uh, saying that we put the O-rings, new O-rings on, which these are new, so uh, we would put this back in the rifle. Uh, again, it's very easy to do. Uh, you, of course, you wanna make sure that your surfaces are all clean. Um, if you have a, an air source, uh, you, you might take and, and just, just go ahead and just blow what 
particles might be there, a little bit of dust. Uh, who knows? It doesn't take much to, to get around an O-ring and then uh, cause it to leak. If you have a little bit of grease, you can go ahead and just use a dab. You don't need to go overboard at all in this. Just put a little bit on, on the O-rings and then go ahead and position this back in. Just go ahead and screw it back into place. Again, this is very easy to do. Uh, that's why um, you know I really recommend if uh, you did have a you knew you had a leak from the regulator area to go ahead and perform the work yourself. Uh, something that could not only save you time but could save you actually uh, you know, money uh, from you know shipping it back and forth. But again, we are here to perform this work. If you decide that, no, I bought the gun, I don't want to mess with it, uh, I'm afraid to take it apart, then be more, we're more than happy to take it in and, and, and complete and do the work that uh, you would like us to do. So once we have that finger tied, I'm gonna go ahead and, and take my ratchet here, position it in place, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it. I'm not gonna go overboard, I'm just nice and snug. We then put the back cap back on, and I'm not gonna use a wrench uh, whenever it's tight. I'm gonna finger tighten it, and there we go. That's good. Okay, so so we are at the point where we installed the regulator, and if you'd like to, uh, there is an O-ring uh, that, that goes on uh, to the, uh, this is what basically whenever you, this goes into the valve body itself, and so if you wanna go ahead and put a new O-ring on here, before you go ahead and, and put the two pieces back together again, you can do so. That O-ring, I believe it's a 19.5 by 1.8. On most of these O-rings, uh, uh, they are going to be uh, 70s. And so um, that's the hardness of the O-ring. So at this point, we'll go ahead and uh, again, just a little bit of grease and we'll apply it here. I like to put a little bit of grease around the edges here. And uh, whenever I'm putting these two pieces back together again, you have to be uh, careful um, that, uh, and I'll just show you that way it's, it's, it's easier. Let me go ahead and, and pull out the, uh, the actual valve pin in the gun. Okay, this is the valve pin, of course. This is the valve seat. Uh, the valve seat, if this does come out, uh, it's going to go in. This is how it, this is how it sets inside the gun. So you'll see this right here. This side, there's a cup here. Make sure that you can see that cup before you put the valve pin in uh, the the rifle. If it's sitting like this, where you can't see the cup, then uh, this right here uh, it will not perform correctly. So uh, whenever you drop this back in to the block itself, uh, make sure that you look at it and as you see, you can see the cup uh, where I'm talking about. Uh, what I was gonna show you is that the spring, this is, this is on the, the valve stem itself. Uh, whenever you're putting these two pieces back together again, you gotta make sure that that goes in there like so. So this, is a, this holds the spring in place. And so if you don't have this in the right place, it could sit where you put, the, put it on the edge there and then you put these two pieces together and then uh, because all of a sudden this becomes stiffer, uh, your gun doesn't uh, operate like it should and shoot like it should uh, because there's more resistance on the, uh, the spring itself controlling the, the, the valve stem itself. Uh, so again, whenever you're putting these two pieces together, make sure that the spring itself goes into the hole. So we'll go ahead and put this valve stem back in, making sure that the it's setting correctly. And I see the cup. Go ahead and drop this in. Okay, like so. And that spring is is sitting in, and it's pretty true all the way around. Uh, I don't want the spring to be canted one way or the other because it makes it that much harder to to, to put this this piece on. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll line this up. I can go ahead and, and see that it's in position right there. Okay, I got it in position. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my stomach here, and I'm gonna go ahead and take that and hold it in, in, in place. And, and then, then of course, you can take and you can screw one of these screws in to hold it in position. If you have your Allen wrench, your four millimeter, you can go ahead and take that, screw that into position until it stops. There we go. 
take one of the screws here that I have. I'm gonna go counter. So basically I, I've tightened this one here. I'm gonna go the opposite side. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tighten this one up here now. And if you have it lined up correctly, you should be able to do this with your fingers. Uh, you won't need your tools until the end where you wanna tighten. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten uh, this, the screws up the remainder way. So I'm gonna put a little bit of force up behind it. Okay. And at this point, everything's pretty much tight. So we'll go ahead and just go ahead and go around the clock there. Okay. Uh, the action, the rifle was put back together. Uh, at this point, we are ready to put the stock back on. And then after we put the stock on, we would be ready to go fill it up with air pressure. And then of course, uh, leave it overnight to see if uh, the, it's going to leak, if that's the problem that you were having. Uh, if uh, that wasn't the issue, uh, you were working with the regulator and you're trying to mess with the velocities, then you're gonna wanna go and you're gonna wanna go shoot it over your corner graph, see what kind of uh, uh, velocities you have. And uh, at that point, you'll know if you need to go through the process again, take it apart and uh, change the uh, regulator settings. At this point, we'll put the action back into the stock, tighten the stock back up, and there you go. If there was a leak at that regulator, uh, we fixed it. You know, I hope that video helps you uh, not only uh, fix any kind of leak that you might have, but it helps you if you decide you wanna go ahead and try to mess with the uh, regulator, adjust it. Again, uh, this is something that we could do for you. If you don't wanna work on it yourself, feel free to send it in and uh, we'll be more than happy to, to, to repair the rifle for you. Uh, one thing about the uh, Daystate rifles is that they have an awesome warranty. Whenever you buy, it comes with a five-year warranty. Uh, you have to worry about getting it to us. After that, uh, we take care of everything else. Thank you for joining me uh, for this repair video. Again, I hope this helped you. And until next time, uh, we'll, we'll talk to you later.